All right, my previous video, I showed uh, kind of a back to basics video to show how to make a basic frequency measurement on an analog scope by properly adjusting the vertical and horizontal scales on the scope, getting them all set, counting some divisions, and calculating out frequency. That really could be done at any uh, analog oscilloscope that has a calibrated horizontal time base. One of the comments that I received to the video was, uh, what about using the delay measurement, uh, like uh, that delay time and delaying time base on this 465 scope to make that frequency measurement a little more accurately potentially. Now, I'll comment that um, you know any accuracy measurement is going to be based a lot on uh, what the uh, time base accuracy is on the analog scope which you know typically might be a, you know a percent or two or less or something depending on the scope so uh, and this scope hasn't been calibrated in probably 10 years so but uh, I'll kind of show you how the process of how you go through that it's actually pretty neat so uh, the delay time base what that does is that that controls essentially when the B time base starts a lot of times that's used and I've had some other videos on how to use the delayed time base and the delay to kind of move around but if we leave the A and B time bases okay these these two guys you know lined up with each other that we could just use the delay to kind of make it a, a delayed measurement so if I switch the horizontal display from the A time base to alternate between A and B, notice I have two traces on the screen. And what you can see, if we look carefully here, you might be able to see that this, uh, this main, the main trace, A, is getting intensified right there. Okay. In fact, if I turn the A intensity down here, let me reach around here. Let's get, let the focus kind of come back in on the camera. I turn the A down, I can kind of see there's the, there's the B starting up. We turn the A back up, and now I can see it. It's trying to get some good contrast there. Now you'll notice if I kind of pull back here and I adjust the delay, you can actually see what's happening here. Okay, You can see that uh, this trace is now getting intensified right here. Okay, And then that's the part for the, where the B trace is starting. So as I advance that delay by adjusting the delay knob here, you can see how we can walk that waveform right across. Now it's important for this measurement to ensure that you've got the trace offset between the A and B traces vertically kind of nullified, kind of get them to be the same. And that's this uh, trace separation control right down there. It says trace sep. So I've already carefully adjusted that. So if we continue to adjust the delay until we've essentially delayed enough so that one cycle lands on top of the other, we can real carefully adjust this. Again, I'm moving the delay knob here until that happens. Okay, you can see if I move this back and forth, okay, and kind of see what's going on there. Now, if we get this kind of adjusted just right, well, we call it a, well, right about here, okay. Now, we look at the knob, we look carefully at that, and we can say, well, that's about 6 point, say, 2.75, okay, 6.275 on that uh, kind of multi-function multi knob there, or the multi-graduated knob. So that tells me how many divisions of this, you know, uh, or excuse me, how many, how many times we need to multiply this, how many divisions we've delayed. We know each division in this case is two microseconds of division. We've delayed by 6.275 divisions, okay? So we go to our calculator here and we dial in, uh, let's see, clear that, say 6.275, okay, times two microseconds of division. So I could say two e change sign 6 is equal to that many seconds, that's so 12.55 microseconds. And if I take 1 over that, that says I've got uh, 79.68 kilohertz. So if I take my uh, signal and bring it over to my frequency counter and uh, take a look at this, I've got 79.78. And I said that was 79.68. So I'm off by 100 hertz. So again, that could be the calibration in my scope. It could be the calibration in this uh, this old frequency counter. Uh, most likely in the scope because I've checked that frequency counter fairly recently. But the scope has it's been out, you know, hasn't been calibrated in quite a while. But just gives you an idea of, of the technique that you would use to using the uh, the delayed time base to make a frequency measurement. So uh, so if you're lucky enough to have a scope that has it. Uh, that's uh, how you could use a delay measurement there to make a frequency measurement.